Hello and welcome back to Hot to the Top. Today we've got the second knockout round of the Europa Conference League and it's quite anticlimactic because we're playing against Genk, who we played in the group stages. Of all the teams we could have got, it is disappointing to, to pick up Genk, although we have beaten Genk 4-0, but they did beat us 2-0 as well. But we have beaten them 4 to an aggregate technically before, so hopefully... We do the same again. As you can see, there are quite a mix of teams still in the competition, ranging from, I suppose, us. We're probably like one of the biggest underdogs in there, along with this team from Austria and, and Maccabi Tel Aviv. I would imagine we're like sort of the underdogs against teams like Everton, Seville, Galatasaray, Besiktas. I mean, they're big sides. So I feel like getting this far is very impressive. And I feel like getting any further is it's going to be a massive challenge. Although, Genk, we've beaten them before, as I've said. So I just don't know. Anyway, in between episodes, we've actually played more games than I thought we were going to play because the, the fixtures have sort of rolled quite nicely for us. So we're going to play Genk, Logano and Genk today. So three games coming up for you. Now, since you were last here for the 2-0 win over Servette and we discussed all the snakes that we had last episode, we've had uh, mixed form. We start off with a 1-1 draw against St. Garland. They took the lead before Alex Smith brought it back in the 84th minute to pick up a draw. But then we lost to Basel, unfortunately, 2-1. They scored in the 91st minute after we controlled that game, really. This is the theme. We seem to control the games quite well. If we look at the stats here, we were overall on top, but Basel came back and won. After that, we played Toon in the league and we won 4-0. That was a good game. That was Schneider with one and Colley with a hat-trick in that one. He's been on fire as well. We then played Basel in the Swiss Cup quarterfinals and we won it on penalties. But really, we should have had the game wrapped up in the first half. If we look at the stats of this one, 33 shots to 11 shots. This is the theme. We are having so many shots. We are creating so many opportunities. We just can't put them in the back of the net. Similar sort of thing with young boys. Colley scored in the ninth minute to make it 1-1. They equalised later on. But if we look at the stats, you can see that actually young boys dominated us here. But Sacramento got a six rating and he's been really poor recently. I'll talk more about Sacramento shortly. Uh, Sion, a 1-0 win there. Uh, Thiago with his first goal for us. But again, a game where we had 19 shots. Should have scored more goals. And last time out, a 3-1 loss to Lucerne. Uh, Eli Yuan scored in that one. Uh, Jordan Boone got an own goal and they scored two goals themselves. But again, look at the stats in this game. There were 29 shots or seven shots. We have to be playing better than that. And again, Sacramento with a six rating to the point where we are changing formations because of him. Now, as you can see, this entire season, all of it, we've, we've stuck with the 4-2-3-1 the wide. But today... We're changing it up. We're going to go for the diamond. And it's a little risky because we've not used it really at all. But it's got to be done. If we look at Sacramento's form, a 6, a 6.7, a 6, a 6.2, an 8.4 there. But his last five games have been rubbish, basically. Uh, and if we go back to the team and we look at Thiago on the other wing, if we look at his form in recent weeks, 6.6, a 7.4 is good. But then a 6.4, 6.9, 6.5, 6.9, 6.4. He's not been brilliant either. So... It's time to ditch the wings, I think, for this game and see if that changes our favour because we have been out of form and because of us being out of form, we've dropped off the top of the table and Basel, who were 10 points behind us at one point, are now only 5 points behind us. So we've got to change something up and hopefully moving to the diamond is going to make things a little better for us. Now, last episode, actually, I did speak about changing the midfield and making uh, Randy Schneider in this position a attacking playmaker and Smith an advanced midfielder. Now, that's the only tactical change I've made in between episodes. And you could argue that that's been the difference. That's why I've had some draws and some losses. However, as you've seen, we are having up to 30 shots a game. It, that, I don't think that's the issue. I just, I'm not quite sure. The issue, the wingers, because they've been in poor form. That's what I would say. Uh, but I don't think changing that around has been the issue. I mean, obviously results maybe look like it has been, but we still have 30 shots and it's like, surely we need to be scoring more goals. That's the issue. Collie, by the way, he's still doing really well. Overall, he scored 22 goals this season, 14 in the league, uh, another eight or so in cup and continental competitions. Yuan's been scoring a couple of goals as well, where he's gone 14 goals himself this season. Smith's on 10 goals. It's just in the recent weeks, we've not been scoring that many and Sacramento's dropped out of form. He's provided 12 goals this season. So once he's been out of form, that's been an issue as well. Either way, we need to get into today's game against Genk and hopefully pick up another 4-0 win away from home like we did in the group stages. So then, kickoff is upon us here today and Augusto picks up a yellow card in the opening minute of the game, which is fantastic to see. Genk have a free kick early on, which goes in the back of a net, which isn't good. You hate to see that. 
So not the greatest start to today's game. And they've got another free kick now. If they score from this one as well, we'll be very cross. But we managed to clear it just about out to uh, sort of like halfway through our half now. As we push them back a little bit with some nice pressing. And Illich gets a fantastic tackle in there on the counter-attack into Coley. Coley holds it up nicely but should have done something a little better with it. As Matos now coming forward down the right-hand side of the pitch. Can he put the cross? And he does. Cleared though only as far as Coley who can play it back to Matos. Back in the middle. Jordan Boone's there. It's cleared apparently in the end and eventually the highlight finishes good little move from us so far already on top of the shots but again we've been like that most games and we've lost them or drawn them crucially here today we need to pick up at least one away goal one away goal would be fantastic as Coley gets in behind the defense looks to put the ball in the middle he does do Yuan can't quite get there Boone gets there Yuan gets there Oh, a double save from the keeper, unfortunately, puts Genk still ahead in today's game. We need to work better. See, this is what I mean. We we have a lot of opportunities. We're just not burying them. That seems to be the biggest issue we've got right now is Yuan is forward once again. And again, it's going to be... Oh, this time actually does go in the back of the net. Fantastic stuff. I was prepared to say, look, we've got this great opportunity we're making for ourselves. But they'll shoot straight at the keeper and that's the issue. But this time into the top corner, Eli Yuan with his 15th of the season, which is beautiful to see. We've definitely got two strikers capable of 20 goals a season, which is fantastic. And it's why we're doing so well this season. They just need to score more goals a bit more consistently rather than getting hat-tricks every few games. So at the break, it's 1-1, which is a good position to be in, especially away from home to Genk, who are, they are a better side than us. We've said this constantly. They are a better side than us. I maintain that still. We just need to work hard. And when we work hard, work together well as a group, we do win games. Nothing happening in this second half. We're already up to the 75th minute with no highlights. And it's time to make a couple changes. Now, we have been limited because I refuse to play Bajrami and I refuse to play Sukachev. So we are a little bit limited. Uh, of course, we've got no other strikers to bring on the pitch either, which is a slight issue. However, maybe we, we move back to the wingers for the rest of the game, which means that who's played better between Coley and Yuan? Yuan's played better. So we take Coley off the pitch. He's on my left-hand side, so Thiago comes on. Sacramento will come on for, I say, he's going to come on the pitch for Schneider, who's not played massively well. Him and Illich can swap over. So there we go. There are the changes that we'll make. Maybe a quick switch to wingers and having two pacey players on either side in the last 15 minutes or so will work in our favour as we lose the ball in an attacking area. And Genk coming on a counter-attack now. Into the area they come. Luckily, no one else is really with their number 18 and he just sees it go for a goal kick, which is good. Uh, we're going to say demand more and we're going to go a bit more attacking as well to finish the game off. As Thiago puts a cross into Yuan, it's clear only as far as Palmeria who puts it back in towards the middle. Yuan's there and Yuan gets his 16th of the season. He's turned the tie around with his two goals and we are now winning the game 2-1. We've also got two away goals, which is beautiful. You love to see it. It's a great corner as well, all the way through to the back post. Headed clear. Palmieri does very, very well under pressure here to pick out that pass right across the six-yard box. It's a perfect place to be, and Yuan works ever so hard to beat the defender and the keeper. Fantastic. So maybe bringing those wingers on is a good option for Perhaps that, that's what we need to do towards the end of the season. Perhaps we start off with a diamond and move to this later on as Smith somehow doesn't score. Somehow it goes in the back of the net. Yuan with his hat-trick. And this is what I mean. We, we've got goal scorers. The issue is they like to score hat-tricks rather than like one goal every game. And one goal every game, that would... That would guarantee us the wins sometimes and things like that. You know, that's what we're kind of looking for. Is Genk did very well to keep the ball out. But in the end, we put it in the back of the net. 3-1 up in the first leg. I think we should be pretty comfortable going through into the quarterfinals. So just a roundup of the fixtures there. It's all pretty tight, I've got to say. The most convincing wins are us, Basel and Frankfurt. Other teams, it could, could go either way in a lot of these other games. So that's quite exciting. The thing is, I was saying earlier on that I, I don't think that we are one of the strongest, I think we're one of the weakest sides in here, or one of the lowest ranked sides. But actually looking through this, like, I'm backing us. I'm going to back us all the way. Of course I'm going to back us. Hopefully it works out. Now, of course, at some point in today's episode, we are meant to be getting our, our youth intake. It's not quite come yet, which I'm not happy with. And here's me slagging it off. It's It's here. But I, it looks like I am going to slag it off because the, the players that have come through... Well, there's no five-star potential there. So, I mean, that that's a letdown, really, isn't it? That is a, it's a letdown. After two seasons of having quite good regens come through, 
Nico Atlenberger looks like the best player there, but he's only one star current ability and three and a half star potential at the best as a left back. I mean, what's the point? What's the point, lads, in looking at this? Roberto Rossi, he's nothing special, is he? I mean, he's a central midfielder, which is nice, but nothing special. It's also quite disappointing when we have invested £2 million in the youth facilities and we've also invested in the junior coaching and youth recruitment and we've got our worst intake. So it does upset me. If we get every player up, though, we have had some fantastic regens come through. So I suppose we are overdue a bit of a dodgy intake. Obviously, Alex Smith is the best, the greatest. Now, four-star current ability. He is just so good. I do feel at some point a big bid's going to come in for him. We'll try and hold off, obviously, but I don't know. If like 20 million, 30 million comes in for Alex Smith, then it's kind of like, well, sorry, lad, but off you go. Obviously, Callum Brennan is still there with four and a half star potential. So is Hunter Ball. He looks really, really good too. Kodra as well. He's not been claimed yet, Kodra, but Kodra is a, is a good regen coming through still with four and a half star potential. So we have had some really good regens come through and actually Kodra could probably start to play in the first team a little bit. He should probably be used as backup because obviously if we try and go for this two striker system, Kodra is potentially someone we should put there. There was also Patrick Hartman as well. He was also a regen that came through another strike. He's also a player we could potentially start using in that first team as well. So we have had some good regens, obviously, but this season it's just not quite there. Interestingly, the quarterfinal draw is today and the semi-final draw as well. So let's view the quarterfinal draw first. This is sort of our route to the final then if we get past Genk or when we get past Genk. It looks like we're going to be doing it. So, uh, the first draws have come through. We are here. So, Genk or Grasshoppers against, there's some big teams left in this, <sighs> Rapid Vienna or Everton. And if I'm being honest with you, oh, either one of those, I'd prefer Vienna, but I think either one of those sides could be the end of the road for us, unfortunately. The semi-final draw then, uh, we're going to be, if we even get through all of that, we could be facing any one of these sides. And actually, these sides look a bit easier, I'd say, than Vienna or Everton. I'd, I'd rather it be like that side of a draw or something like that. Oh, it's difficult to say. I think we'll get past Genk. I think Everton won 2-0, didn't they? Is that what I said? Did they win 2-0? They won 2-1. So it's still a big chance for Vienna to turn it around. I'd rather play Vienna. But I think that they are probably a stronger side than both us and Genk. Before we think about any more Europa Conference League stuff, though, we have got Lugano to take on in the league. And I think... We are going to make a small tactical change. Alex Smith is going to become an attacking midfielder on support, whereas Schneider is going to become that advanced playmaker on attack. Let's make that. Let's do that. I think we're utilising Schneider a little bit better. Alex Smith is also used to some good capabilities as well. So there are two changes or slight changes that we'll make tactically. Now, we should probably change the lineup a little bit. Bianconi can come on for Matos. Boone's tired, so Anastasio can come on for him. We'll bring on... Is Hossu back from here? Hossu's still injured. We can't use Hossu yet. That means that we can't really change the midfield unless we use Bajrami, but I'm banned from using him and Sukachev, so we're, I'm refusing to use them. A few of you are probably screaming out at me saying, just use them, Tom, get over yourself. But I can't, you know, they've, they've snaked me. So only the changes at fullback positions. Hopefully they keep the fitness and we uh, we get a big win today. So kickoff is upon us once again and Grasshopper's taking on Lugano. We're at home today, so hopefully the home advantage will do us some favours. Lugano are in fourth in the league right now, as you can see. like It's, it's a three, well, it's a two horse race for the title between us and young boys, although Basel could sneak up there if we don't start to win games and Logano have gone one up within four minutes oh the VAR is reviewing it and actually it didn't count it's fine I'm not quite sure what went on with that it will tell us up here in a second was it, it was offside clearly so back to nil nil which is good but they do have a corner now Logano which we have cleared Schneider on the ball clears it up to Ellie Yuan come on lad get the ball up to Alex Smith who's through come on Alex Smith come on oh nearly as I was saying, though, uh, Basel could catch us up, but it looks a bit more like a two-horse race between us and young boys this season. Top three is guaranteed us, young boys, and Basel. I can't see Lugano or St. Garland catching us up anytime soon at all this season. So it, top three is guaranteed for us this season. So we're not going to be... 
or you wouldn't think at least, will be in the Europa Conference League next season. We're either going to be in the Champions League by winning the by, by winning the league, and the Champions League by finishing second, or the Europa League if we finish third. But Collie has just put us 1-0 up in today's game with his 23rd goal of the season. The thing is, maybe we do have to move to a two-striker system as well. Perhaps this is the way to go. Perhaps we need to stay away from wingers, maybe, as Collie gets another goal, because we have played really well, actually, with this formation. I'm surprised at how well we've actually played. Considering that we haven't used this all season, they're probably not that used to this formation. They're much more used to and prefer the, the winger formation. I'm pleased with what I've seen so far. Eli Yuan on the ball once again, looking to put a ball back into the middle as he cuts inside. Passes mark, his shot though is straight at the keeper. Perhaps should have tried to square that one a little bit, but don't blame him for, for that. As he's got another chance through behind the defence again, taking the shot. And again, perhaps if he'd looked up the opportunity to square it over to Collie would have been there. But again, you can't blame. He gets in. Those, he gets in great opportunities to score goals. I'm so glad that we've got Yuan and Collie permanently. Like usually, we get really good strikers in on loan, and then it's always a case of they're not going to join us permanently. But we've got two 20 goal a season strikers on our hands, and it's perfect. And to think as well, Coley was playing last season in the third tier of French football. We saw that he was good. We saw he had a, a decent mould around him. We've trusted him. And he's turned into the star of grasshoppers this season, really. We're going to take uh, Araho off the pitch and we're going to bring Bozanovic on. That's the first change we'll make. We might bring the wingers on again a little later on. I think doing that, bringing the wingers on late on in the game, is quite devastating, actually. I think that's a great use of our tactical play. And actually, with 20 minutes ago, we might just do it now. Get the pacey players on the wings. Uh, we'll leave We'll leave Yuan on the pitch. Collie's played well, but Yuan's had the, the more opportunities, I feel. So we'll leave... Yuan on the pitch. Collie will come off for Thiago. Uh, Illich is going to... We'll swap these two around. We'll move Illich. We'll take Illich off this time, actually. And Sacramento can come on again. Oh, I've just noticed Schneider's four-star current ability as well. Now, him and Smith, they're, like, pushing each other on massively. Such good players. I'm, I mean, I'm so glad we didn't accept that big bid in summer for him. I mean, it's a lot of money, which we could have used, but... I'm glad we didn't sell him because he's a, he's a great squad player that I want to be able to team around as well as Alex Smith. Either way, we've got two future stars of Swiss football in our ranks. We're very lucky to have them. Fingers crossed they just keep progressing how they are and they start playing really well as we've just scored a goal. Augusto, I mean, it's a set piece, so I can't really say it's a tactical genius from me changing to the winger formation halfway through the game. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim it was a tactical genius decision from me. And with four minutes to go in today's game, the wingers are coming into full effect as the cross comes in and Yuan's header just over the bar. But that is, I think this is the key now. I think we do this more often because it's working quite nicely. So a good 2-0 win there over Lugano means that we draw level with young boys now who must have drawn their game midweek. They're just ahead of us in goal difference. We're on 32, they're on 33. So... Again, it's still neck and neck for the title. Oh yeah, they drew with Basel earlier on, which is quite good to see. So it really is going to be neck and neck for the title. Now, this could cause a few issues. Okay, so we've got two suspensions. Augusto and Illich both suspended for this game against Genk. I think it kind of forces our hand to actually go back to the wingers for the entire game to actually have players to play in the positions that we need them to play in. So Illich will come off, of course, for Sacramento. Augusto can come off for Bozanovic. We'll take them both off the bench as well as Thiago moves on the other wing for Colley. We will leave Yuan on the pitch for now, though. We'll bring Matos back on for Biancone and Boone can come back on for Anastasio. So there's the lineup for the game against Genk at home. Again, with 3 1 up with three away goals, it should be routine. So, for the final time in today's episode, kickoff is upon us, and we've got a corner early on, which is cleared, but only as far as Sacramento. Back to Schneider into Yuan over the bar, which seems to be a bit of a bit of a theme with Yuan and headers. Free kick right on the edge of the area, taken by Schneider. It's uh, saved by the keeper and nearly pushed into the path of Yuan, but it is cleared as well in the end. All we have to do really is see this game out and we will be progressing into the quarterfinals, probably against Everton. Have they already played yet, Everton? 
Oh, they might. Oh, we play. I think they played earlier last time, so we're playing the earlier kickoff this time. So actually, we can't see the Everton score line yet, which is a little bit of a shame, but it's not too much of a worry. We can focus on that after the game. Obviously, we just got to beat what's in front of us first and foremost, which is Genke. And we're looking to do that now through Matos up to Sacramento. Sacramento into the middle. It's still going, and again, he's just been. He's selfish. He is ridiculously selfish, and it does work sometimes because he's on what. Is it 12 goals he's on this season? Which is very, very good, obviously. But he's, he's just better off passing in so many opportunities. On so many occasions, he should be passing rather than shooting. And we could have scored so many more goals this season if he decided to pass rather than shoot. Which is a bit of a letdown, really, as Boone puts into the middle. Alex Smith is there. And that was just a fantastic goal, that really. Great finish from Alex Smith. His 11th of the season, the young 18-year-old. What a regen he's turned out to be. And Alex Smith, you did a fantastic job picking him as your regen to be renamed after. You've done a superb job. You're going to go down in, in grasshopper's history. It's a volley. It's not even a header. It's a volley. It's a flying volley as well, which makes the goal even better. You love to see it. So at the break, 1-0 up against Genk. 4-1 on aggregates. They've got to score quite a few goals as well. We've got three away goals on them. It's going so well. If I'm honest with you, I... What a goal that is from Alex Smith. I was going to say, if I'm honest with you, I didn't think we'd get to the second qualifying round. I think I thought we'd come second in our group and then probably lose to a team like Ajax who dropped out of the Europa League. Obviously, Ajax actually lost to Seville in that first knockout round, which is surprising. But that's how I thought it was going to go. I didn't think we were going to end up in the second knockout round, let alone the quarterfinals, which it looks like we're going to be going to now. Unless, of course, Genk can score five goals in the next 25, 35 minutes or so. But they obviously they won't do that. Now, my only worry is going forward, we are going to have a very congested fixture list over the next few weeks. We've got the cup semi-final. Obviously, two legs of a quarterfinal of this and league games to play where we're fighting for a title, essentially, is what we're fighting for still. So I feel like the fixture list is going to be very congested, which does concern me because I feel like something is going to give at some point in there. Obviously, we want to try and stay in each competition for as long as possible. But I feel like the longer we stay in this, it's going to affect our league results. I think we've got a great chance of getting to the final of the cup. I think we play Lugano in the... It's either Lugano or Luzerne that we play in the semi-final. We've got a great chance of winning that. And if we can get to the final, that would be fantastic as well. But something's going to have to give at some point, particularly because we do have a small squad. I'm refusing to play two players out of principle because they're snakes. So that sort of limits our squad as well and our rotation. And whilst you're probably all screaming at me to play them, I'm not going to because they're, they've snaked me. I'm not playing them. It's a matter of principle, okay? It's a matter of principle. You know, if they want to do what they want to do, fine. But you're not going to play for my club anymore. That's what my decision is. And it's worked out relatively well okay at the moment because we're still in European competitions. We're still in the cup. We're still drawn top of the table. So it's not that detrimental yet, but it... I, it could be. It could be. I need you guys to back me on it, all right? I need you guys to back me on it because when we inevitably lose the cup final or something like that because we, we haven't got the players on the bench because I'm refusing to play Bajrami and Sukachev, I need you to back me in those situations rather than say, Tom, you're an idiot, which you probably all are commenting already. I mean, it's it's. It, I am being an idiot. I know. Genk have pulled a goal back then right at the very end. Um, I, I was talking and then all my voices, what am I talking about? They scored a good goal. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I got confused with what I was trying to say. So it all just sort of went into a big blah, blah, blah. Uh, So that's why the highlight sort of stopped before they maybe scored the goal. I don't know. Either way, a lovely 2-1 win. I forgot to make substitutes in that game as well because um, I was too busy talking to you about how we might have issues with squad rotation. And that's why, because I keep forgetting to make substitutes in situations like that. Either way, I'm being a little bit negative because we have just had a fantastic episode where we have progressed into the quarterfinals of the Europa Conference League. Alex Smith got two goals. We won in the league as well, which put us on top of the table. Now we need to find out, are we playing Everton or Rapid Vienna? And we are going to be playing, when it wants to load, come on lads, Everton. They beat Vienna 3-0. Moisey Keane with a goal as well. This guy, who I've not heard of before, also scores some goals. Right, this is going to be tough. So next episode actually works out quite nicely. Now, Everton, Servet, Everton, Lugano. It's more likely that I will play Everton, Everton, Lugano and do Servet off camera like we have done in the past when we've had four games we need to play. So that's probably likely going to happen. But if nothing happens in that first Everton game, for example, 
we may as well do Servette as well to have four games. We'll see what happens anyway with timings and things like that um, because I don't like to put really long episodes out because I feel like you guys switch off at that. But maybe you don't. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today's episode. The fight continues on three fronts. Hopefully, we keep it going all the way to the end of the season. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time for some more Hot to the Top. Have a good evening. Goodbye.